just talking about playing the the bass on one and three while the snare is on the second beat and the fourth beat remember here we're talking about playing in four four so one two three four that's a perhaps as basic, basic as it's gonna get, okay? Now, there are many different things that we could add to the cajon to simulate what's happening on the drum set, okay? Now, before I even get to that and using this brush, I just wanna mention that we can add variations to this rhythm to make it more interesting or to just to change it to change the style of the room that we're playing so i'm going to use my right hand for this now what i'm going to do is add some 16th notes on the bass and on the snare and what i mean by that is the sound is going to be a one e and a doo -doo -doo -doo. so it's a little bit faster than it's just a one two three four it's going to be one e and a two e and a three dun, 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 dun. In other words, there will be 16 of these for one pass, one bar, one measure of music that we're going to play. The 16th note, bass, or 8th notes as well, additions of a bass or a snare can be added. For instance, one, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay, so I'm just, I'm adding some variation here. I'm basically at the very base of it, if I were to just to break it down, I'm going one, I could go one, two, three, four. One, two, so right on the end of one, we can add one. One, 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 and then add the snare right on two. I'm sorry, I'm probably confusing you a little bit before there, and even as I'm thinking, there's so many different variations and ways that we could play this. So, one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I can add, do the same thing with the snare. Right after two, I can add another, an eighth note snare, or basically a quicker snare, uh, uh, right after we hit it on the second beat, okay? One, two. See that second one? So there's lots of variations. So if I do the same with the snare and add variations with the bass. So now I'm just, I'm improvising, okay? But first we wanna, it's a little more advanced, but we wanna practice with the metronome. Count, okay, developing that so that you can add these extra uh, beats within that rhythm. Perhaps we'll do a whole nother um, video just on developing that, okay? But we say all that to get to using this brush now. I'm adding different 16th notes, eighth notes, whatever extra snares, bass notes with my right hand, and I'm gonna use this brush to add an ostinato, a steady tempo, that's going to simulate what the hi-hat will be doing on the drum set. So let's just say it's a all right? Now, I'm not just going to use the brush and just play on any part and just wherever it lands, however it sounds, but I'm also searching for the sound that I want if depending on who I'm playing with, whether I'm playing by myself, do I want a chunkier sound? Do I want a brighter, splashier sound? If I go up higher and angle it so that the part of the handle towards my thumb is towards me and the brush is out, it's lighter. If I do that and then hold it, 
I can get it ch -ch to add some a splash, a little bit of my own type of reverb. If I want it chunkier, again, I angle the actual brush, not the part but my thumb, a little closer to me, inward. Out. So I can play with the different sounds, changing my hi-hat sounds. So I I got this. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm going to count again, and I'm going to come in with a basic rock groove. And then I'm going to begin to add those faster, those quicker bass and snare notes. One, two, three, four. Okay, little nastiness at the end there, a little too loose. So anyways, um, you see what I'm doing here. I'm adding the ostinato to simulate whatever rhythm. Now, I can do a more of a disco or just the upbeat with the, the, the brush. Very basic stuff there, just one. Three and four and one and two and three and in between one, two or one, two, three, four in between every note. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Or I can switch it up with my left hand depending on how I feel and whatever anyone else in the band is doing. I'm comping everybody else in the band as well. Whatever, right? So the idea is I can simulate or add another texture, sound palette. And my sound palette is increased now by using a brush. Now, this brush is can telescope in or out. And the great thing about that is that I can change the stiffness of the bristles. And that's going to affect the sound. The farther out, Maybe it's a little looser. Extra sounds going in there. Maybe a little lighter when I play here. Now, again, now the way I'm holding it is I'm kind of doing a traditional grip and just kind of, if you were to come back this way, so that you can see the main thing that's happening is that the, the drumstick is actually being pushed with these fingers up against this middle finger here, the longest finger here is actually pushing up against the brush and the cajon. It's pushing against the cajon, but also my the back of my, the knuckle of my thumb. And depending on how much tension, it, well, the, the, the amount, the sound that I want depends it on the tension that I place on the actual brush, okay? So there's a lot of options that you can do there. That's just, a couple ideas with the brush all right we can take two brushes and we can do some nice ballad work if we wanted to as well and you got to be careful with these things because you could impale yourself as well now that wouldn't be good all right so we can add effects ambient effects So many different things that could be done with these brushes. Now, that being said, same thing with the shaker. Now, I have two different types of shakers here, okay? One of my favorite types of shakers to use is a minor, the soft one, the red one. And when I need to go higher or a louder dynamic, then I'll switch to the black one or the gray one, but mostly I use the red and the black one. So I have two different shakers here. One that I made with rice and a Carolina Table Salt original. Uh, where did I get this thing from? Lowe's Shopping Center, something, Lowe's Food Store. Anyways, I used that and I put rice inside. 
so it's chunkier, just different sound. Beautiful thing about shakers, can't get enough. Okay, so playing a shaker pattern or playing a, a little bit of a, a, sh a shaker pattern with some dynamics. One, there's an accent on the one. See if you can pick that up. One and two and three and four and. So if I play that, and then I can play the groove with my right hand. Very basic groove with my right hand. Little less basic, little more advanced. Now, I've got another dynamic just by using a shaker with the cajon. Now, if I'm doing this with this song, sometimes it's nice just to add the shaker for the tempo if you're the only drummer now, if you're the percussionist, okay? Then we come in with the bass. Then a softer snare. Then we might make the whole dynamic of the cajon now louder. So I'm using the shaker and the cajon dynamics between my left hand and my right hand so that I can add layers to the song. Not just adding a straight shaker pattern and however loud it is, that's however loud it is and however loud my right hand is, but depending on where the song is going. Or it's a really neat dynamic when in the beginning we might just be playing or just a bass and then the groove comes and then once we get to the chorus so you'll notice if I just play the cajon no shaker and then add the shaker it adds some excitement to it Now imagine with the singer and the guitarist and the whole band, now you are, you're, you're simulating cymbals and basically it's, it's not just the, the other instruments that you're simulating, but it's the emotion that you are trying to uh, evoke, the emotion that you are evoking, uh, that you are desiring to, to interpret to the audience, to your heart, to God, right? to describe that moment, whatever the case may be. So now we can add a combination of, and these are just a couple ideas. Honestly, there are thousands, probably millions of variations of what we can do with shakers and brushes and whatnot, but we're starting somewhat small and then increasing, okay? Now, actually, before I even pick this up, so let's say I have this shaker and then the, that drops out. Now I can use a heavier shaker to change again the emotion. Two, three, four. It's a little bit louder, a little bit harsher. And you'll notice the difference, I'll play both of them. Okay, so now it takes a some practice and skill to be able to play a shaker with your left or right hand and do something completely different with your other hand. I understand that. One of the ways to develop this, if you haven't already, a lot of percussionists are able to do this just because they're, especially if you're playing shakers a lot, if you're constantly, you have years of just doing this, you don't even have to think about it or even a or even a 6-8. A, a right? So a triplet feel there. If the way to really practice it, and, and this is going to sound obvious, and it's not the most, it's not the sexiest or the most exciting way to do it, but um, to play the shaker, but is to just practice 
playing the shaker to a metronome with the song over and over till you get to the point where you can have a conversation with someone or the microphone and still play the shaker. If you can't speak, have a conversation, pick something up, right, without still keeping that shaker, even if you get thrown off just by the slightest thing or some uh, talking or adjusting something, then you're probably not where you need to be with that particular instrument, okay? Shaker is no different. So just practice with the metronome and just keep going. And now you can add, you can play straight eighth notes. Let's just say on the bass note. One and two and three and four and. So let's slow it way down as an exercise to develop this. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. Just practice right there. Then switch it up to from the bass to the snare. Practice with that right there. It starts getting a little tricky because I'm hitting bass, snare, bass, snare. Out, out. The shaker's going out while I'm hitting the drum. But now I'm going to practice the shakers coming towards me as I hit the drum. Now, I've just switched it. Instead of going, I'm going. Combining those is where it starts becoming tricky, okay? So you can practice them independently. Out, 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 in, 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 in. Now we do both. Very slow. Out, in, out, in. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing, but now if I were to play it, So if you practice that both ways or just constantly here so you can actually have a conversation and start trying to add notes here. Three, four, then maybe I can add eighth notes. One and two and three and four and back to the quarter note. Three, four, eighth note. One and two and three and four. Have a metronome playing. Always keep having a metronome playing. Count one, two, three, four. The metronome's still going there on quarter note pulses. Two, three, four. Then you start singing in eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one, two. Alternate. Just keep practicing. And eventually you'll be able to do variations. Just practicing like that for a week or two, you'll notice. Now, combining the shaker with the brush. Now we have different textures. But before we even introduce the shaker, let's say we're playing a rhythm. I have that, t t t that extra ostinato. So in the beginning I may do that and then pick up the shaker. And then it comes in the other part of the song. That was nasty, wasn't it? So now, just by adding a shaker and a cajon, I mean a cajon, a brush, with playing with the cajon, I have now increased the sound palette, the possibility, the aural possibilities of the cajon with a band of playing with other musicians. So, 
is a Vic Fur shaker, Mino percussion, make your uh, uh, shaker, make your own shakers. Try whatever other brushes you want to try. Try broomstick brushes. Maybe we'll do another video with those as well. So if you like this video, if it helped at all, I know it was very candid. I wanted it to be candid. So if you like this video, if it helped you at all, hit the like button. Give me some feedback, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.